Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 50 of Hulkbuster. So to recap last time, I actually managed to walk in the suit, having tinkered around with the legs quite a lot, done a few bits and pieces, attached some bungees, and then I did a test with my beautiful assistant. And you can look at part 49 to see all of that. And I was pretty happy with the way I could walk in that. So today I'm going to try and get the arms back on and the back panels that I've got just here hopefully and we can do another test but I do need to tinker around a bit more a few more things to the legs but mostly some stuff to the arms and also the point at the waist where the torso sits on top of the legs when it's locked up we need to look at that because it's a bit wobbly at the moment and it will probably fall over so let's have a closer look so I've put the torso back on top of the legs here and as you can see and as per last time I've got this piece of safety wood and the piece of safety wood is there to stop the back keeling over at the hips. So if we look right into the hips here, what we've basically got is the torso is suspended and it's bungeed on through a hole. And this is a piece of Ninja Flex bushing. And there's basically a printed plug and socket that holds them together. I've got a little block of wood here, which hopefully stops it keeling over backwards. But um, if I disconnect the safety wood, then effectively this can pivot at this point and the torso will um, fall over forwards and when I hang the arms and the back and the things on then it's a lot heavier on top so what we really need to do is stick some extra things in kind of at the front here to kind of support this to stop it keeling over so I'm going to make a little bracket that fixes in the front of the legs and just supports this underneath so it's much more stable I'm going to use this piece of steel, which is quite thick and quite strong, and also this piece of wood to make this part. Um, it, although most of the load is actually right on that Ninja Flex bushing, um, which is holding the torso up, and all I really need to do is make a thing to stop it tipping, I still don't trust it quite to a piece of plastic. So I'm just going to cut this into a length and then make a little stopper that goes on the top out of wood. So back inside the suit, the piece of metal is going to screw onto this piece of wood, like so. And the piece of wood I've cut is going to go under here so that they meet. It looks a bit weird at the moment, but I'll get them screwed on and we'll see how it looks. I've attached these. Seem pretty strong, just screwed in with two screws into the wood. So now I just need to put the wood on the bottom of the torso. Here they are, so these are just stuck on the bottom of the torso and those are screwed into through the plywood and into another bit of wood that makes up the chassis. All this silver is just wood painted silver, so that's right at the bottom of the torso. Um, in a way it's a shame I cut these corners off when I made this, I should have had this further forward so then this would uh, have something already to prop that bit of metal on, but as it is I've just had to make up this corner. Eventually these will be decorated and painted silver and have things stuck on them when I do the rest of the cosmetics. Right, that's much better now. If I'm doing a public event or leaving this standing for a long time, I probably will still have the safety wood in here, just because. But apart from that, it's fine for getting in and out of it and it holding itself up. So hopefully it should better the load of the arms as well. And everything's good. So let's have a look at those arms. So here's one arm. It's not too heavy actually. There is some weight to it and I was planning to reduce that weight by removing some of the steel that's in here. So right inside here I've got this joystick that I grip and that's on a slider um, and that allows me to slide up as I put my arms out because of course the arm gets longer from where I am. Um, that's on steel runners, or actually desk drawer or kitchen drawer runners. So I was going to remove that altogether but actually the steel's quite thin so I don't think it'll have that much impact so I'm going to leave it in there. The other steel bracket is this one which has actually got the elbow hinge on that's got a bolt all the way through. And the rest of the forearm is 3D printed plastic with foam on it again. So um, actually I was planning to leave that anyway, although I could replace it with a 3D printed bracket in the future. Um, so actually there's not too much to do. 
Um, still not totally convinced about the weight of this thing. With both of them it does add up, but with the modifications I made to the legs last time to stop those bungees pulling it may be okay. So I think I'm going to put these on and then we'll try it and see how it looks. So the arms hang on here, which are these gimbal mechanisms I made fairly early on and they just bolt on this threaded studding here. In the back of this, the arms are pushed out by bungee cord, which is hooked to the bar here, which is just next to that gimbal piece, and right down into the arm here. And that's suspended with this fake piston, which is essentially a piece of wood resting on a point here. So both those arms are held out. But can I walk in it? Right, the first test, I'm just going to pick it up with the arms on and see how heavy it is. And I think I've done this before, and after this I'm going to put the back on, then we'll go and do some stuff to the legs, then I'll do a whole test with the legs on, that's the plan anyway, so let's see. Alright, something went pop with the bungee somewhere and I'm not sure where, I think it was one of those sticks, but the arms seem to be hung okay. So actually, it doesn't feel as heavy as I was expecting. I am missing the shoulder bell, as you'll notice, which I'll put back on shortly. But actually, I think that's all right. I don't feel too uncomfortable. I'm pretty sure I can handle the legs with this as well, which remains to be seen. But uh, I'm not feeling too terrible about this. So let's get the shoulders on and those back panels and the arms. See how that goes. The shoulder bell's attached to these two bolts and they've been there since early on also. Right, it's time to put the back panels back on and I can see how that goes. I've screwed the back doors on, so... Well, I can pull those shut with the bungees as per the episode a couple of episodes ago when I fitted them so now I'm going to attempt to see if I can walk in the whole thing all right Right, it's a bit back heavy, isn't too good. Pretty sure my back doors are shut. Yes, they are. You just see, obviously the front is going to be pulled down slightly by the legs. Actually, let me reposition that. Oh, that's better. All right, so let's just get everything shot. Yeah, it's not too bad. I still think I can walk, actually. I can definitely stand on one leg okay. I can put my arms forward, which makes me feel all right. If I put them back, I can kind of offset the load quite a bit. I might need a waist strap, but at the moment I'm feeling not too bad. All right, so I guess all that remains is to have a look at the legs and then put the whole thing together. One of the most obvious questions is, will the legs, now I've cut the ankles and put those ankle locks in, actually support the weight of the top? And I think they will, because the top's not as heavy as carrying a person, but the legs actually appear to support my weight. So that should be alright. If you're watching carefully when I did the walking testing in part 49, which was the last video, you'll have noticed in fact that not all of the ankle locks were actually undone, the inside ones were still done up. Um, these are supposed to pop out like so, which frees up the ankle, and there's one on each side, uh, which means the whole ankle can move. Unfortunately, these ones got left done up, um, which affected flexibility a bit, um, but 
What we need to do, of course, in the next test is make sure they are undone. However, I did have another issue of the leg twisting outwards and I put a bungee at the top um, to stop that, which I thought worked really well, but in fact it wasn't. It was that this ankle was still tied in in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is actually tie these ankles down with another piece of bungee. So I've got flexibility, but it still keeps the leg from twisting. I'm just gonna use some short bungee cord and just put that in here next to the lock. Um, these were normal bungees which had loops on that you normally buy like these from a car accessory shop. The loops got cut off a long time ago in some other project. There's just about space to get a zip tie through the loop. So I can put those on a screw here and here and just hold them at an angle like that. The next thing I really want to fit is the toes which have never been fitted to the bottom of the shoes here or whatever the legs um, so last time I tested without them um, these are just foam they were made with polystyrene and foam and all sorts of stuff pretty lightweight of course they are kind of uh, heavier on one side where I've got this piece so I think the balance point is about here probably maybe slightly back so I think I need to somehow attach a bungee across here and attach that to some of the 3d printed frame here so they kind of just hang in there but they're flexible as the toe moves backwards and forwards, which of course happens here against this bottom plate, which is hinged with those door hinges you can see. I've put a zip tie through a hole in each side. The foam's actually pretty tough and so is the uh, rigid board. So I've got one on each side and then I'm gonna use some of this black, quite thin uh, bungee to stretch across and tie that into the frame in the shoe. It's kind of hard to show what's going on, but I've zip tied one end. It's gone through the 3D printed frame under here and this is the other end that I'm going to attempt to cable tie for the other zip tie, but it's pretty tight and this will pop back into place when I've done it. I need to keep holding this. Try and do the zip tie up. There we go. Oh, that should pop in there. Should probably be flexible enough as the leg comes forwards, like so. It's gonna scrape a bit, but that's just the nature of it. It's time to test walking in the legs. As before, definitely having that side to side motion is really useful because I can actually pick my mass up. Might need to tighten up those toes a bit, but uh, I think on the whole, pretty okay. Let's see. Yeah, my toes are definitely sagging a bit there, but they do bend properly when I go backwards. I pick my feet up. They're not too bad, and those bungees I put on the inside are definitely causing the legs to twist inwards instead of outwards, which is kind of what I'd expected. Right, it's test version two. I've tightened some of those bungees and I've slackened one of the ones on the inside of one of the legs, whichever one was pulling it inwards. And I've attached the toes a bit better just by pulling the bungees tighter. So uh, let's see, I think this is much better. The toes don't fall down now. So that's good, but I can still bend my leg to take a step. Like someone who can walk. So pretty happy with that. Yeah, I can walk backwards okay. The toes seem to stay in place now. Pretty happy with that, that seems much better. Right, here's all of the suit pretty much together. I managed to get the top on after a couple of goes by basically putting it on my shoulders 
and then climbing on this box and walking into the suit and putting it on. So at least that's an option. If everything goes really wrong, then I can in fact sort of suit up like that, even though I don't want to really. So I've got a couple of bits of safety wood in the back there. It's slightly back heavy as it is. And you can see there's more sticking out the back than the front, although I've got the back of the legs still to go, which will proportion it, but won't help balancing it. But apart from that, that's pretty much all of it. So what we need to do is give it a test and see if I can actually walk in it and I've no idea what's going to happen. All right, I'm in, so we can do a little test. It feels okay, it is fairly weighty. But it's not too bad, and having those bungees pulling down on the front is actually helping pull the suit forward to compensate for those doors on the back being heavy. So, as good as I can. That's going to take a bit of getting used to with the arms. So watching that footage back, it looks like quite a few of the pieces are wobbling around, especially that left leg, which is actually the one I loosened the bungee on earlier on. So I might consider more of a rigid strapping system or something printed in NinjaFlex that doesn't stretch as much. And I might consider that for the arm bungees as well, because you can see there's quite a lot of wobble in there. The elbows aren't actually tight at the moment, which is why that's happening to some extent. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy I can walk. It's going to take a lot of practice. Um, trying to keep my legs far enough apart is one of the big issues, but that's something I need to practice in. In terms of weight, it is heavy, but it's not too heavy, so I think we can get around that as long as I don't add any massive amounts of more weight to it. But obviously most of the top section has the mechanics in and bits and pieces. I've got some electronics to go in, but that's about it. So next time I think I'm going to continue with the back of the legs, and we'll get that structure put back on the back and start working on the panels. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. Also check out the social media links in the description to this video.